My name is Nancy Basket and I love kudzu. This is kudzu right here. Little stuff. Oh yeah. This is kudzu right here. Come on. And we'll get the trees and it will take over. Yeah, it's coming from the ground. Darn stuff. It grows about 12 inches and then it'll start putting down roots. Their roots eventually become about 400 pounds big and they look like big sweet potatoes. Kill it. Mm -hmm. So you use it instead of killing it. Yeah. But it just wants to be very friendly and have you use it. Mm -hmm. And growing 12 inches every day, you can sit on the porch and watch it growing a half an inch an hour. <laughs> so it's trying to get your attention. I've been down here in the south, currently now in Wahala, South Carolina, learning about kudzu for 18 years. Um, Kudzu is my friend, and it was crying like a voice in the wilderness saying, somebody please listen to me, we can be used for everything. Looking at how other people use it in different countries, it is used for cloth, it is used for food. The chlorophyll content mm -hmm. in a kudzu leaf is very, very strong. You can use the small leaves for food. Kudzu quiche is wonderful. Uh, you can use the root starch if you don't have a problem with alcohol as a great energy uh, product. It will also help thicken soups and sauces. So you can use it and get the benefits of it even if you don't think that you need it. You can bale kudzu and make a barn like we're in right now. You can um, turn the kudzu root starch powder and use it in soap. Mm -hmm. It blooms in the summertime and it finishes about September 15th where I'm at. And you can turn the blossoms that smell lovely like grape wine mm -hmm. into jelly. Wow. The walls, they're bales of kudzu. My friend brought them down on the farm truck. So it's a new green kind of building. Sure. Now that just lately we've become green conscious, now maybe people understand that they've got green gold in their backyards here in the south. And maybe they can use that to eat um, for their food, to supplement, mm -hmm. because the time is coming when we're going to need to know how to use things that grow naturally. Mm -hmm. Kudzu was an indigenous in the beginning, but it's here now, so we need to know how to use it. Being Cherokee on my dad's side and German on my mom's, I live here in Wahala, and the Germans came in after the Cherokees were forced to leave, so it's kind of a cool place to be. But I came here to learn the stories of respect to teach my children, and now I'm telling my grandchildren the same stories. Long, long time ago, little boys started kicking frogs, and they kicked frogs so many times it gave them warts, and the frogs went home to their families and gave them warts too. So they said to the Creator, hey, those little boys have forgotten what respect is. Help them remember, Creator. So the Creator says, okay, I'm going to take this into consideration. Little girls went around and they stepped on bugs and they squished them and said, ew, ah, I don't like bugs and they hurt their ears and everything. So that the bugs went to the creator and said, little girls have forgotten what respect is. They're hurting all of us and if they kill us all, then one day they're going to want a fabulous turkey who eats bugs to cook for dinner. They're not going to have any more. Please help them see that all things are connected. So the girls and the boys one day went out to hunt and they didn't use everything for hunting. Uh, the skin and the bones and the meat, they just wanted to kill things. So it was getting serious and awi usti, and that's what we call little deer, the leader. He said, Creator, things are getting out of hand. We have to help the people learn that all things are connected. What they do to other things, they will do to themselves one day. So he said, this is very serious. He said, animals, they've hurt you the most. You make them sick. Make them sick and they're going to get closer to the ground and maybe they'll remember that I made them out of the same clay I made you out of. You're all relatives. Oh, they said, this is good. So they got together in their councils and the bugs got together and said, those girls, they hurt us so much, we're going to make their backache every month and they're going to really find it hard giving birth and, and this is going to be funny and, and they deserve it too. And the little worm who was leading the um, bugs, he laughed so hard he fell off the log and he broke his back. And to this day, the worm goes like this. So when you see that worm in your garden, you remember that when you discipline somebody, don't do it by laughing. Mm -hmm. 
the bears got together and they had big claws. They said, the men hunt us, we can kill them too. So we're going to cut off our claws and we'll pull the bow and then we'll get back at them. So one bear did this and the other said, now how are you going to feed yourself? You can't dig for grubs anymore. You can't get the berries. So this isn't going to work. So they didn't do anything. The other animals gave them diseases. They put little tiny microscopic viruses and bacteria on the backs of the mice and they carried these diseases to the people. And the people were dying all over the world in the hundreds of thousands, bubonic plague, black plague. And it was killing the people and the plants said, Creator, you made this world for everybody. We're all relatives, we're all connected. If you kill off all the people, then we're going to die too. And we would like to offer a plan. If the people who remember how to use us will ask us how we want to be used, each of the plants will give a cure for one of the uh, diseases that the animals gave them. Mm -hmm. So some of our people still know how to talk to the plants and we are given answers and cures and some of the plants are for medicine and some of them are for helping. So if we remember that, then remember all things are connected and we can even use katsu. <laughs>